In Montebello, California, there is a small white bungalow where, as Weston Fippen of the Los Angeles Times writes, noise rules. This is not only the home of homeowner Elisa Sanzano, but of three of her tenants, all of whom have a debilitating mental illness. Stephen Pofile and Stephen Pofile and Mitchell Kautz lounge about in their own universes as radios and televisions blare, while Robert Gifford, an American military veteran who had spent 38 years of his life on the streets, sits in a chair and, when Sanzano isn't looking, steals her papayas. It's safe to say that Los Angeles has a large population of homeless people. Not only that, but many of these people also suffer from a wide range of mental illnesses. In Western Fippen's September 22, 2012 article, Program Creates Shared Homes for LA's Homeless, he reports that on any given night, there are 90,000 homeless people in the county. Put that into perspective, that is three Cal State LA student bodies. The American Journal of Community Psychology states that 6 to 27 percent of homeless men, of homeless women, and 11 to 19 percent of homeless men reported being hospitalized for psychiatric reasons in the past. As a member of a community that wants to find a better way to treat these people, I feel a connection to those who suffer from mental instability on a daily basis. The organization SHARE, the Self-Help and Recovery Exchange, has set out to help alleviate these problems in and around Los Angeles with limited resources but a boundless sense of community. I will first go over some of the tenets that SHARE abides by. I will give a brief history of the coalition, and finally I will describe some of the lives who live through SHARE and who have been assisted by this organization. So, what are some of the programs that, that SHARE uses to help assist the mentally ill? We will first go over some of their tenets in order to better understand how they serve this community. The Technical Training Proposed Agenda of CalWORKS, the California Work Opportunity and Responsibility to Kids, states that, states, states that the Department of Mental Health has funded SHARE to, has funded SHARE to provide information and referrals to self-help meetings. This is one of SHARE's chief purposes. According to the agenda, they provide information for, quote, more than 9,000 self-help meetings in L.A., unquote, as well as assistance for existing self-help meetings. They also provide anger management courses, rapid recovery plans for those who have more severe cases, and even job opportunities for those on the road to recovery. In 2005, Cher opened its collaborative housing project in which homes would be provided to those with severe mental instability, addiction disorders, and other conditions which affect both, both the housed and homeless populations. This is a house that has been put up for rent by a private benefactor in my hometown of Whittier. These homes are, uh, the benefactors agree to take in clients as long as they agree to go to counseling sessions and help around the house. Housing has no lease, but housing has no lease, but clients must have a monthly income of close to four hundred seventy-five dollars, or or social security income. So these are a few of the programs the share has put into place to help assist this community. But how did this coalition come to be? Share's history, although a brief one compared to organizations like it, is rich in its humble beginnings and its modest yet modern enterprise that it employs still today. So, according to Share's website, shareselfhelp.org, Share had begun because of, quote, the frustrations people attending self-help groups faced. They continue to state that Share officially opened its doors in a abandoned warehouse with a leaky roof in Venice, California in 1993. Cher, Cher began to branch out in 1994 by, as they began to list the self-help groups and, 
refer their clients to them. By March of 2005, they had by March of 2005, they had begun to get funding by the Los Angeles Mental Health Department for their work. Last year alone, Cher reports, they had helped more than 46,000 people through their self-help meetings. 2005 was also the year in which their collaborative housing program had begun. And last year alone, they had helped more than five. They had helped 539 people into supporting, supporting, supportive housing. So that is a brief history of SHARE. So who are some of the people that live with this organization? We have had a brief meeting with Mitchell, Stefan, and Robert. So let's, so Weston Phippen's article takes a more in-depth view into their lives. Stephen Popolet, 54, is a diagnosed bipolar, is diagnosed bipolar, with bipolar disorder. He pays a monthly rent of $475, as, does the, as do the rest of the tenants. Mitchell Kautz, seen right here, is a diagnosed schizophrenic. He lived with his mother until voices, drinking, and drugs drove him away. He lived in rehab until he was able to find Cher, and now lives with his self-proclaimed best friend, Stephen Poffle. Robert Gifford, seen here, is a veteran of the American military and spent 38 years of his life in the streets of L.A. He, too, lives with the other two tenants in Cher housing in Montebello. <coughs> These tenants are more like them, abide by a set of rules, and agree to pay rent. And their homeowners, in exchange, provide house services and carry the liability of the tenants. They also agree to attend classes in which they, quote, learn to maintain a healthy environment. This is what lends to what Jeff Christensen, the project director of SHARE, states, creates a family culture. He goes on to state that, in other words, we can't just have six people move into a house. The responsibility is to create a family environment. 